One of the cool things that we're going to introduce in OpenScore 2 is the infrared ball triggering solution. Um, this system is uh, pretty simple in its theory of operation, um, but is actually kind of hard to find. Uh, sometimes uh, systems can, can really be outrageous in terms of cost. Um, and uh, really, their theory of operation is quite simple. Um, in OpenScore 1, you had to press the S key every time you rolled a ball in order to actually score the deck. So what this actually does is it takes care of that for you, and um, it has a configurable delay that's actually configurable in the OpenScore software. Uh, and uh, you don't have to have this. I mean, uh, even in conjunction with this, you can still use the S key. Uh, but uh, once you throw the ball, uh, the default configuration is actually two seconds. Um, some systems can go, you know, 1.8. You can set it to whatever you want, even instant. But uh, I obviously would not suggest that. Um, and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to break down uh, the subcomponents of the system. It's actually divided into three major parts. Um, and you're looking at it right there. The, the two boxes that are actually located on either side of the lane are actually the transmit and receive. Um, I'm working on a reflector version, but uh, this actually works uh, very well. Um, so actually, if we come over here, um, on this side, we actually have two major components. Um, the silver box you see here is actually the main chassis, and I have it unscrewed right now so we can actually open it. And um, and inside it are all of the solid state electronics that control uh, the transmit and receive. Um, in my chassis, this will actually be a full blown version, but uh, you can actually um, probably buy this uh, in a standalone configuration, which will then just go into your computer with a single USB cable and automatically communicate with OpenScore. Um, this right here is actually uh, an Arduino. Um, it's actually pulse width modulating the infrared uh, transmitter and uh, the receiver is actually looking for certain codes uh, transmitted over uh, infrared pulses um, to determine whether or not the beam has been broken. Um, and we are using uh, basic Cat5 cable um, because I have plenty of it and um, it's actually nice and uh, resistant to interference which is pretty cool. So. Um, put the cap back on this. Uh, actually, we'll leave that off for now. Um, and then we have the uh, infrared receiver labeled RX. Uh, these are in, you know, nice blue plastic boxes. Um, and they sit right here on the, on the side wall of the lane. And uh, across the way, we have the actual um, infrared transmitter that uh, is right over there. Um, whenever you first boot the system up um, and plug this in, uh, as a matter of fact, I can, I can do that. So yes, whenever we first plug it in, um, we actually are thrown into the default alignment mode. So um, I just have this temporarily taped down right now. Um, You'll notice that whenever I remove the, uh, the actual receiver, um, the LED goes off, but the indicator, the alignment indicator LED on top will uh, shine whenever it is in line with the actual transmitter. So if we got it aligned here, all right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, the, the light came on. And uh, I'm just going to stick it down with some tape there. Um, ideally, this would actually, uh, I'd probably ship some Velcro or something there, so it would be pretty easy to position and reposition it. Um, and of course, the uh, transmitter at the other side of the lane, um, you can actually, if the camera will focus, no. can actually see the infrared beam coming through just faintly. But uh, yes, that is uh, the basic uh, design of it. Um, and of course, the USB cable goes right back to the computer and OpenScore picks up on it automatically. So now I will show you the, inf uh, the OpenScore uh, configuration and a demo. OK, so this is the uh, main landing screen for OpenScore version 2. I have the AccuScore theme enabled. 
Um, and in order to configure our infrared ball triggering system, all we have to do is go down to the bottom and uh, hit menu. And we will click configure options. And we have a tab here called triggering and we'll click on that. And we can actually configure the scoring delay on trigger. So basically how long from the time that the ball passes in front of the beam um, do we wait uh, until actually scoring the deck? And right now I have it set at two seconds. This is in milliseconds, and it can there is no minimum or maximum uh, within value that within values. If you hit zero, um, it will score instantly. So um, some systems do this at 1.8 seconds. Others do this at um, an upwards of of two seconds. I've got mine set at two. It just kind of uh, with where I had the the beam. Tr positioned on the lane, it, it felt right. So uh, that works out pretty well. Very simple configuration. Um, this is using a, 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 new, a new feature um, with, that comes with OpenScore 2 that's actually called OpenLCS, which is the, uh, the Open Protocol Lane Control System. So uh, we can actually start interfacing OpenScore with uh, multiple types of hardware, such as uh, ball triggering, um, sweep and table motors, those types of things. Um, this was originally designed uh, around my chassis, but uh, hopefully coming up with a, uh, a generic programming interface that can help anyone else who wants to actually make their own uh, half-scale pin setter and interface it with OpenScore, um, they can do so um, with relative ease. So now let's go and uh, demo this on the lane. 